Hello, Keith here and welcome to the September 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. And it seems that some have decided to return for September, so let's take a look at our review for the month. And as always, a reminder of our installation. So we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, 9 panels on the west facing roof, 7 panels on the east facing roof, with a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. We make use also of five pylon batteries with a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts and a Solis 5G inverter. So, as we cycle through the monthly representation of the solar day for our location, let's move on with the summary for September and see the impact as we move into the autumn. And midway through the month on September the 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the east at 6.30 in the morning and sets at 11 minutes past 7 in the evening in the direction of the west. There is a total of 12 hours and 41 minutes of daylight on this date. The 15th of September has 1 hour and 56 minutes less daylight compared to the 15th of August. And at the middle of the day, the sun is 41 degrees above the horizon, which is 12 degrees lower than the same date in August. Weather-wise, in the UK we've had a very dry September with barely any rain in the first two and a half weeks. And because of this, our Net Atmo weather station measured only 9.2 millimetres of rain, which was 22% of the average monthly rainfall for September, according to our local Met Office weather station. And this has certainly benefited our ability to generate solar energy. So in September, we saw 517 kilowatt hours of generation, down on August, but we are now into the autumn months. Overall, we managed 17 kilowatt hours of generation per day, but compared to last month where we had 20 days on which we generated at least 20 kilowatt hours, we only managed that on 12 days in September. In the main, our generation was usually between 15 to 25 kilowatt hours per day. Our worst day was the 17th of September, where we generated only 7.4 kilowatt hours, but our best day was the 4th of September, where we generated 27.4 kilowatt hours. We have had the system installed for a year now, and that means that we can now compare against the previous year. Now, we didn't get the install switched on until the 7th of September 2022, so there's a gap for the first week of last year. But in the main, even discounting the first seven days, last year we generated 351.5 kilowatt hours, and if we take the same date period for this year, of the 7th to the 30th of September, in 2023 we generated 374 kilowatt hours, so an improvement on last year. And if we take a look at the 4th of September on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see that it was a pretty clear sky all day, as there were no big dropouts where it may have been cloudy. So of the 27.4 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 9.4 kilowatt hours directly from the panels, sent 9.8 kilowatt hours to the batteries, and exported 8.1 kilowatt hours back to the grid. And of the batteries, we used 11 kilowatt hours. And in terms of import, we actually only imported 0.9 kilowatt hours on this date. With regards to peak generation in terms of kilowatt hours, we saw a maximum generation of 5.2 kilowatt hours of peak generation on the 1st September, and a minimum of 1.9 kilowatt hours on the 17th September. Typically, on a daily basis, our peak generation was between 3 and 5 kilowatt hours, and for the month we averaged 3.6 kilowatt hours. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage and grid export. On three days within the month, 98% of our energy usage was directly from our solar generation, and that was the 2nd, the 5th and the 11th of September. Of these dates, the 2nd was the best day that we actually saw in September, with 98% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and batteries, but we only imported 0.4 kilowatt hours from the grid that day and generated 24.6 kilowatt hours. Of that generation, we used 7.2 kilowatt hours directly from the panels, sent 9.1 kilowatt hours to the batteries and exported 8.3 kilowatt hours to the grid. And we used 10.3 kilowatt hours from the batteries. Over the month in total, we exported 68 kilowatt hours averaging 2.2 kilowatt hours per day in terms of export. And on the 2nd, 4th and 5th, 
of September, we exported over 8 kilowatt hours back to the grid on each day. For the month overall, we sent 229 kilowatt hours back to the batteries. And if we compare that to September 2022, for the period in both years between the 7th and the 30th of September, because we didn't switch on until the 7th of September last year, but we sent 146 kilowatt hours to the batteries in September 2022, compared to 172 kilowatt hours for the same 24 day period this year. And we also used more of that stored energy, meaning that our total house usage was significantly lower in terms of imported grid. So I am of the opinion that the batteries were not working correctly from the outset last year and prior to the batteries not communicating to the inverter uh, from November onwards. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery and grid import for the month. As you can see, we had 11 days in September where 90% or more of our electricity came from solar generation. For the month in total, 80% of our electricity usage was directly from the solar panels and batteries with 20% imported from the grid. And this is how our import cost per day looks. The blue being our standing charge at 42 pence per day and the orange is the grid import cost at 31 pence per kilowatt hours. Our average import cost per day is £1.28, £1.70 if you factor in the standing charge. So how did we do in September 2023? As we saw, 80% of our electricity consumption in July was through solar generation, either directly from the panels or from the battery. And overall, we generated 517 kilowatt hours of electricity, of which we used 220 kilowatt hours directly, exported 68 kilowatt hours, and sent 229 kilowatt hours back to the battery. Our grid import cost for July was 51 pounds and 11 pence, and that was for 125 kilowatt hours. We were also paid seven pounds and 25 pence for our, our export for the month, and that reduced our electricity bill to 43 pounds and 86 pence. But our generated usage, if we hadn't had solar in place, would have cost an additional 152 pounds and 85 pence. So the total cost, if we hadn't had solar generation and battery storage in place, would have been £203.96 based on our total house usage and our current standing charge and unit cost. So for this month overall, we have seen a reduction in our generation and export values and overall our savings. That's mainly due to the time of year as our solar day is now shortening day by day. So it's to be expected that we'll reduce our solar generation throughout the remainder of the calendar year. That being said, despite generating 174 kilowatt hours less than we did in August, which is a reduction of 26%, we still sent a comparable amount to our batteries and still saved 152 pounds on the cost had we not had solar and batteries in place. In total, for the year to date, we've generated five megawatt hours of electricity, of which we've used 4.1 megawatt hours and exported 1.2 megawatt hours. And our grid import total is 1.6 megawatt hours which is a little over a third of our typical grid import for the same period last year before we had the solar panels and battery storage in place and with that that was our september 2023 overview for october we are expecting a dramatic reduction in performance and that's just purely based on last year's data as always let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see and click here for my first year update video if you'd like to see how the system performed over its first year. And finally, if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.